And there's really three main places where energy goes. Manufacturing goods, buildings, transportation. And the fundamental question was, is there a singular project that we can kind of pull all of these three things together? How can we integrate the home, the grid, and the vehicle together? Can we do things at less cost, uh, less material, use less energy, conserve more natural resources? Is there a way that these all can be connected and smartly communicating to each other? It's all about how do you rapidly innovate. That's the speed that business moves in. We didn't want to think conventionally. We wanted to try to follow the clues that this technology was offering us. How can we bring additive manufacturing to enable integrated energy system? And I just do it, but do it fast. We build buildings the same way we built them for centuries. What if we didn't have to use any of the materials that we, we typically have? We're not limited to corners and straight walls. Remove all of the constraints of today. The additive manufacturing is a way that you could rethink conservation, energy, and material, almost a symbiotic relationship between energy and the way we live. But I think also the process, there's instant feedback, the testing of ideas, throwing it out, failing sometimes, but then moving on to find a, a solution. If we get it right the first time, it probably wasn't innovative enough. Because if you, it needs to, we need to be able to try something and try something that pushes what we know. We're now close to 25,000 pounds of printed parts going into the house, into the car. We had to develop a whole new 3D printing technology where we could print things very quickly very, very accurately. So it's been a real revolution in terms of the manufacturing. Not only create a project like this that's very innovative and very futuristic, but also look at, you know, our existing homes and existing production environment and, you know, how can we create, you know, new processes. But we're only going to learn that through these relationships with these companies. First reaction, people look at us and say, you're crazy. What do you want to do? But I feel that we as a national lab need to push the boundaries to the edge. Where can research, where can engineering go? The idea is this rapid innovation. Additive allowed us to come up with this design and change on the fly. We could examine new battery technology. We could examine new cleaner burning fuels, renewable fuels, integrating novel high efficiency engine technologies. It's the flexibility of this printed platform that allows us to explore all those opportunities. And then you think about it, most of us have a vehicle that we only use about one, two hours a day. How can we use the car, not just in terms of transportation, but energy generation? When you drive down an interstate with a regular, let's say, 65 miles an hour, you produce enough electricity, power from this car to power two of your houses. Then the next question is, how would it work in real life? When does it most make sense to use a, a vehicle to power a building? Can there be great energy savings and cost reductions by having buildings and vehicles communicate smarter. Sending power both ways had to have architectural changes, design changes, going from fundamental analysis to simulation to do prototyping. What we developed here is the first bidirectional wireless charger, which has level two power level and takes the same time to charge as a regular plug-in. So instead of coming home and turning off your engine and leaving that motor sitting idle, the intelligent control system decides which way the wireless power transfer is transferring energy. You pull in solar, wind, energy storage through a battery, and then get it off the grid. That's the beauty of technology. 20 years ago, it would have taken a control room to do this. Now we can do this with a chip. The Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Office of DOE has a National Lab Impact Initiative, Tech to Markets. So they want to help connect industry and the national labs in such a way that it drives innovation and market impact. You bring in the best from all these different areas, you can't help but do something good. It's amazing that just 12 months ago this was just a concept and now it's a reality. And it's just a glimpse of what's to come from ORNL and our partners in the area of energy efficiency and sustainability. None of us knew where it was taking us. And maybe that's one of the definitions of innovation. It's all about exploration, testing, experimentation, and moving forward. Moving at the speed and scale of business. Amy, it's not the end, it's the beginning of a discussion. We want people to look at it and say, what if? <laughs>